Hey folks, welcome back to DD Audio Tech Talks. My name is Jake, and today we're going to talk about the wild world of car audio competition. Some of you may be familiar with the various ways to compete in car audio and aspire to join the fun, but haven't quite made the leap into the competition arena yourself. You might be thinking, I don't have the money for that. There's no way I can compete with the huge systems already out there. Well, fear not, my friends. With multiple organizations and a plethora of classes available, there are plenty of ways for you to compete and have fun doing it. The 2019 competition season has recently come to an end, and competitors have gone into rebuild and tuning mode in preparation for the 2020 season. For those of you that want to get into car audio competition, there's no better time to start. In the world of car audio competition, there are two main areas, SPL, or sound pressure level, and SQ, or sound quality. Just to generalize, the SPL categories are based around getting loud, while the SQ categories are based around sounding amazing. So let's talk about the various organizations that hold these competitions. First up, we have IASCA, or the International Auto Sound Challenge Association. IASCA is the largest and oldest of the competition organizations, and they started out by holding sound quality contests. But now, they also hold SPL contests, known as the IDBL League. IASCA is also one of the few international organizations. They're worldwide, baby. Next, we have USAC, or the United States Auto Sound Competition. USAC started out at Thunder on Wheels in Mississippi with a bunch of dudes metering their cars in parking lots just for fun. But in the 90s, when their popularity spread like a wildfire, they took their journey overseas and added the lowercase i to the end of their name and would come to be known as United States Auto Sound Competition International. Hosting both SPL and SQ leagues, USAC is the second largest of the car audio competition organizations. Next up, we have DB Drag Racing, or more commonly known as just DB Drag. Founded by veteran competitor Wayne Harris, DB Drag Racing only holds competitions in the SPL category, but nonetheless, they have a plethora of fun ways to compete. Next on the list is Mecca. Mecca, or Mobile Electronics Competition Association, is a newer and smaller organization exclusive to the US. Founded on keeping competitions both fun and exciting, they host both SPL and SQ competitions with a plethora of fun and interesting ways to compete. Last on our list is good old Midwest SPL. Midwest SPL, as you could probably guess, is confined to the Midwestern United States, and they only hold competitions in the SPL category. So you're probably thinking to yourself, holy crap, Jake, that's a lot of organizations. Which one do I pick? Where do I start? Please help me. Fear not, my friends, for I possess the power to summon help in this time of great crisis. Without further ado, I present to you DD Audio's own master competition guru and former IASCA judge, the one, the only, Mr. Aaron Trimble. So Aaron, when does the competition season start up again? How much time do I have left to get ready? Really, the season actually does start right back up as soon as finals are over. In fact, at a lot of finals, there's a triple or quad point event uh, in tandem with finals that you can compete in additionally. Typically, you're gonna find that they're gonna start up again in spring, you know, March, April is gonna be where you start seeing a lot of these shows come up. Now, if you're trying to go for the first show of the year, the biggest one is going to be the CES showdown held in Vegas. It's uh, done in tandem with CES, but it's not sponsored by CES. Is it true that you have to take out a second mortgage, buy a van, fill that van with concrete, then spend like $100,000 on gear to be in this competition? It really depends on how big you want to go into it. If you're interested in some of these big walled vehicles and you want to be competitive in those classes, uh, yeah, they're not, they're not inexpensive to get into. But the cool thing is, is a lot of these formats, a lot of these organizations have smaller, more entry-level classes that you can get into where, you know, even the guy with a pair of 12s in the trunk of his vehicle can still be competitive. Team Mini does great with theirs. Now theirs is a little bit more modified and they've been working on that car for a couple of years. They have a lot of time into it, yeah. But again, they're, they're doing very well in their class. Obviously they won this year, they got their championship and they did it with a pair of 10s. Where should someone that aspires to compete in car audio get started? Uh, the, the easiest classes to get into are gonna be the straight SPL ones, where you're essentially playing for a tone. It's the easiest to understand. Uh, you don't have to worry about a whole lot of goofy rules or anything like that. The judges will put you into a class. You'll wait for your turn. You'll go into the lanes. Uh, you'll play a series or a single or a series of tones in order to determine where you're the, uh, at what frequency you're the loudest. 
Uh, it's very simple. When you start getting more comfortable with it, that's where you'll do stuff like uh, bass boxing or street beat, where it's a musical class and you're judged over a, a range of time. Every org really does a good job of making something that's safe for the entry-level competitor or a brand new competitor. They try and make sure that they do a really good job with that. The, the only time when I would say you wouldn't necessarily want to compete uh, in something would be at like a big world final show, um, you know, or a, or a world record show. Um, those ones, they're a lot more, um, a lot more scrupulous with the judging methods. So if there's little things that are wrong with your vehicle based on the rules, they're going to pick them out a lot more. Whereas a single point or a double point event, those ones, you know, oh man, I have a, an amplifier where it doesn't, or where it shouldn't be, or maybe my enclosure is a little too tall, um, so it bumps me into a big crazy class. Uh, a lot of times they'll give you mulligans for those because they understand that maybe you're not competing on the regular or something like that. Should someone that wants to compete decide on what they're going to compete in before they go all in on designing and building a system? If you are going to compete with the intention of winning, like that's your goal, absolutely. Uh, you should absolutely figure out what class you want to be in. Um, you know, if I want to be the uh, the trunk king, if you will, if I want to be the the King Kong guy in that in a trunk class, I need to figure out how much power I'm limited to, how much woofer or cone area I'm limited to, and what sort of modifications the vehicle are allowed. Because the last thing you want to do is tear out your rear deck and build some crazy wall type thing into that space and then find out, oh, well, the class I was shooting for doesn't let me modify any of that. So you end up getting bumped up into the next class where maybe you guys have more cone area or more power, and that will put you at a disadvantage. Which competition organization is best for me? Should my choice be influenced by my location? Yeah, Midwest is pretty much limited to the Midwest. Um, I've seen them go as high as Chicago. Um, they go out, uh, you know, I don't know if they've gone to Colorado, but you can definitely find them in Missouri and Oklahoma, um, things like that. But you can pretty much guarantee that if you're going to compete in the U.S., you will be able to find a competition for USAC, DB Drag, and IASCA. Mecca, I've seen them nationwide, but they're a lot more hit and miss. They are definitely more focused up in the northeast side of the country. Once someone has entered the world of car audio competition, what can they expect to happen at their first show? Biggest thing you need to do is make sure that you go to the judging tent right off the bat, get checked in. The judge will help you figure out what your class is. Um, they, depending on what you've got in the vehicle, they may even ask you to pull up to the judging tent uh, or the judging lane and show this, show off your system so that they can get kind of a better idea on where you should be placed in what class. Past that, it's it's basically just waiting your turn, essentially. Um, some shows will be a lot more loose and they'll say, just form a line and we'll get everyone through. Some uh, organizations will give you a specified time, especially when you start getting to larger shows. If you decide to attend something larger, like uh, Slamology up in Indianapolis or Slam Fest or something like that, um, typically they will give you a time slot just because there's so many people competing they want to make sure it's organized so it's best just to make sure that you talk to the judge when you get to a show and find out kind of what the, the etiquette is what are some good rules to abide by for example I've heard you mention lane etiquette can you elaborate on this and some other ground rules that beginners might not know right off the bat if you're not sure what's going on at a show if it's your first time the best advice that I can give is to watch some of the people before you Typically, like if you're going to compete in any of the organizations, they'll, they will often ask you to keep the vehicle closed, whether you're competing from the outside of it or the inside of it, until your run is done. Right? Don't open the door, don't lower the windows, any of that sort of stuff. Especially when it comes to a high level competition, uh, they can disqualify you oftentimes for opening up your vehicle or changing the environment uh, mid-run. So keeping the vehicle closed is always good. Making sure that you run inside your time limits is good. Um, like I said, if, if you watch a couple of people ahead of you competing in the same format, uh, whether it be IDBL, base boxing, you know, mayhem, whatever, um, watching ahead of time will oftentimes eliminate a lot of questions. What's the car audio competition community like? You will find that the people that you actually see at shows are not typically the people being dicks online. So this, you've got the, a lot of talkers online and you've got the people that actually show up and, and do the damn thing. Um, and those are the, the true blue people that you're typically going to want to associate with. And you'll find them pretty quick. Thank you for your time, sir. You bet. And much appreciated.
Whether you're an enthusiast with a small system and an aspiration to compete, or just a kid that's still waiting to get his first car, hopefully this video has helped you understand a bit about the world of car audio competition. If you need help deciding where to start on your first system, head over to ddaudio.com forward slash dealers to find a dealer near you. If you're a DIY enthusiast and need help with a box design, feel free to give our customer service department a call. Either of these resources will be more than happy to help you out on your journey into the world of car audio competition. If you like this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Maybe click the little notification bell next to it too, and you'll be notified anytime we post a new video. Also, be sure to check out the playlist link at the end of this video for more DD Tech Talks. If you have suggestions for future videos, feel free to let us know in the comments. Just be nice to each other and stay positive. That's what the car audio competition community is all about. As always, thanks for tuning in, folks. We'll see you right here on the next DD Audio Tech Talks.